a weapon. It's 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 a so we're going to start over here at first. But before we do that, we'd like to open in prayer. Who would like to open in prayer? Who would like to open in prayer? Yeah? Okay, thanks. Is it Cynthia? Hey? You want to open in prayer for us? Thank you. Right, anybody like to see the eyes closed? Is 
Yasha, which means say, and the other, the, this next part is na, which means please. So Hosanna means say please. And that's why when they came, the, the Israel, Jesus came in, the Israelites said, say please, because they believed that Jesus was going to save them from the Romans. Okay. But in actual fact, Jesus did save us, didn't he? He well, saved us from our sins. Amen. Okay. So that's why it's so appropriate that we sing Hosanna to Jesus. Because he did. He saves us. Okay, he saves us from our sins. Okay, so that's pretty cool, huh? Amen. So that's what it means. Now when someone says Hosanna, you can go, and I know what that means. Okay, <laughs> right. So we're going to do a little acting out here. So I need someone to ride the donkey. Me, me. <laughs> Come, and we need some people to wave the, wave the palm leaf. Come, who would like to wave the palm leaf? Here you go. We have to stand down now. Yeah. Come guys, hey, what's wrong with you in the back? You're broken your legs. Come, 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 come. We need four more. Right. We stand this side, they have to stand that side. There you go. You make a chop thing there. Come, let's stand this side. Sit there, this side. Yeah, this side. Hey, come on, guys, go to this. Just stand here. Yeah. Right. You stand there, sir. Right. And up, stand back a bit so the camera can see you. No, 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 that way, that way. All right. Okay, so Jesus came right. You need to go there and back, eh? Huh? On a donkey, and there you go. Yay! Yay!
for everyone was going to see Jesus. Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem and the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of him. His followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. The Pharisees were upset. And they told Jesus to stop the people from saying things like that. But Jesus said, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into tears. So the people kept on singing, blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered, asking, who is this? And the crowds replied, it's Jesus. And Jesus rode the donkey through the street of Jerusalem to the temple in a triumphal entry, just as God said he would many years before. The story of Easter, the Last Supper. This is Jesus, who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. The disciples asked Jesus where he wanted to eat the Passover meal that night. Jesus said, as you go into the sun, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. The disciples found everything to be just as Jesus had said. Later that evening, Jesus arrived with the 12 disciples. They sat down to eat, and Jesus said that he was happy to be with everyone. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. He said, take it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Jesus told them to do this, to help remember him. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he said to his disciples, this is my blood. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of men. Jesus said, one of you eating with me here will betray me. He told them that things were supposed to happen this way, but that great sadness would await the one who betrays him. The disciples were very upset and asked, am I the one? Who is he talking about? Judas asked Jesus, am I the one? And Jesus said, you have said it. One of the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, who is it? Jesus said it was the one who he would give the bread to. He gave the bread to Judas, and Jesus said, Hurry, and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant, so Judas left at once to betray Jesus. Then Jesus comforted and encouraged the disciples. He promised them that they would have a helper come when Jesus was gone. They all sang the song to God together. Last Supper, and who can tell me what did he say the bread was? Who can remember? 
name, but what did you say was the breed? Yeah. Pig. Pig? Pig body. There you go. And then what was the Y? Okay, so what we've got here is we've got some um, grape juice and and uh, bread. And I want Uncle, Uncle Eric, could you come see the bread for us? And we're going to share it with you. Okay, just like Jesus and his disciples did. Okay, okay so this is probably the most important ceremony that Christians have, that Jesus instructed. And he said, as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this wine, you remember my death until I come back to take you home with me. So one of two things are going to die. Either we're going, we're going to die first, and if we die first, we're going to be with the Lord Jesus. But one day, he's coming back again. Amen. But until then, he sent his Holy Spirit to comfort us. And you know who the Holy Spirit is. Some of you have received it and spoken in other tongues. So, the other thing is, the only people, the only people who should ever partake of this table is who? Who do you think should partake of this table? So we have it down at the restaurant or at McDonald's? I can't hear. No. Who should take of this table? I can't hear. I can't. Cynthia, please take the mask off. I can't hear. It's only to be done in church, but what if I can't make church? I can do this in a hospital, I can do this in my home. Jesus didn't say it had to be done in a church. The question is, who can take at this table? Who can eat at this table? Tell me. I can't hear. His disciples. Who's his disciples? And what is us? Sorry, on the end, say that. They also said born again Christians. Hallelujah. Right. Only the born again. Okay. So I'm going to read you the scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. Find your Bibles. Ruffle, ruffle, ruffle. And on your Lindsay, thank you for doing this today, to teach the children what this very, very special table is about. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Check their Bibles on their phones. Where's your old paper Bible? Good. Right. I'm going to read. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. And the reason why Jesus' body was broken, why do you think so? It says it in Isaiah. Why do you think Jesus' body was broken? Because of sin. And he promises us healing. And he said, my body was broken for your healing. And so when you partake of this, you can ask Jesus to heal you of any sickness, all sickness and disease. The bread 
it doesn't heal you. Jesus heals you. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Okay, well, so I think they can all just come up and you can take a, 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 a grape juice and a piece of bread and then go back. Okay, you. wait, let me tell you first about the blood. The blood represents Jesus' life. His body represents being broken down to heal and deliver us. Okay? Heal us, make us whole. Why? Because sin makes us not whole. His blood was his life that he gave for you and I. To take away our sins and to give us eternal life. So the order to do this is you eat first the piece of bread and then you take the wine. And what I'm going to suggest is all of you come and take the piece of bread and a cup and we wait here and then we're going to take it together. Okay, come by. Come, everybody, can make a line here? Maybe in the old days they would have sent around a cup like this. <laughs> No, no, just wait for us. But do you wait? Take a piece of this and the wine. That. Okay, right, so Tanaka, I'm going to ask you to say a prayer for us and then we're going to take it. Right, just bow our heads. Say a prayer, please. sin and for your forgiveness of sin. In this church, you have short glasses. Right, so another thing that they did at the last cycle 
over. Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Oh, sorry. I'm not going to get you to wash tongues. Oh. I did it at school. They loved it, but not in the classroom. <laughs> Oh, I'm being lizard, yeah. What about me? Okay, very bad in the dirt. I'm still the doctor. I did extra dirty for you. <laughs> Just because I knew you were going to do it. <laughs> but why do you think he washed their feet? Because they didn't have a car. Yes. Why did he wash their feet? Because they didn't have a car. Yeah, they didn't have a car, but there was another reason. Symbolic reason. <laughs> I have to leave the children to guess. Yeah. Why do you think? went to Jerusalem to celebrate. Jesus had 12 men who followed him through his ministry. They were called his disciples. Jesus and his disciples gathered for one final meal together. Jesus got up from the table, took off his robe, and began to wash his disciples' feet. Jesus loved his disciples, and he knew the time was coming for him to leave them and return to heaven. When Jesus came to Peter, he said, Are you going to wash my feet? Jesus said, You don't understand what I'm doing. And someday you will. No. Peter said, You will never wash my feet. But Jesus then told him that unless he washed his feet, he would not belong to him. Oh, well then, oh God! <laughs> Peter said, then wash my hands and head as well not just my feet. But Jesus told him that was not necessary. He just needed to wash his feet for Peter to become clean. So Jesus finished washing their feet and said that the disciples should do to others as he had done for them. He told them to follow the example that he had set for them to serve each other and not think of themselves as greater than any other. Then God would bless them for doing as Jesus had taught them to do. Okay, so sorry, it was for like a cleansing and purification. Okay, sorry. Okay. My nerves got the better of Jesus. No, it was also to show his respect yeah. Yeah. that he can do it for us. Okay, sorry. Okay, right. So then after they had the the Last Supper, 
as Jesus and his disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, Jesus went there to do something. Does anybody... Well, I'm not going to ask you. We're going to find out what it was. Okay. So, we've got some clues, and I've hidden things in the... In the um, sorry, sorry, sorry. There you go. And um, I've hidden clues around, and we're going to do it by class. Okay. So, I hope we've got some representatives from each class. Okay. So, on to tier two's class. Come on to tier two's class. Right. Your clues, you need to look where a joyful noise is made unto the Lord. A joyful noise is made unto the Lord. So, go see. Go see where the joyful. Go look by the piano for a bright colored piece of paper. See what you can find. Oh, you go understanding is making a joyful noise. That's on the internet, I can just go there. <laughs> Oh, oh, I, 
are worried about something, you can pray straight then and there. You can literally walk and go, Lord Jesus, please wash out of that person, keep them safe. And Jesus will listen. You don't have to make an appointment and set the right time. You can talk to Jesus whenever you want to. And praying is when we talk to Jesus. Sorry for what you've done. All right, and you'll always forgive us. Okay. <laughs> and you can pray for others. Uh, others. <laughs> and yeah. And, and what is for yourself? You can pray for yourself. You can ask Jesus what you need as well. Okay. But always remember to pray for others before you pray for yourself. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Do you want to guess how many people are in that? And so quickly do it. 
to be on the right of people. So yes, some of the men. So yes, black men need to be on some of the people. It's always been Up with the right to the Roman numerals. Because you're old geography. Alright. So our closest number is this London. Oh, I thought I should. What did you guess? Jesus was doing, or how he claimed to be the Son of God. 
and so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus and give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying, and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council, and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the Savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the Son of God. You say that I am. And the council was furious, and they shouted that Jesus was guilty, and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate, and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. They found him to be innocent. So Pilate said that he would punish Jesus and then release him. But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on. His clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own. And then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, If you really are the Son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, this man truly was the son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed, and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Don't be afraid, said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day and ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life.
Let's give it a big hand.